morning students so today we will start another important experimental video for our lab demonstration so here we will start the experiment based on redox reaction and which is a potentiometric titration experiment so potentiometric titration is one of the important experiment that is based on the fact that the electrode potential is to be determined by means of instrumental measurement so here we will measure the standard electrode potential or the electrode potential of a system and then by virtue of that we plot the reduction potential with respect to the volume or number of drops then we will get a titration curve as per like that of the previous experiments like pH or conductance we will get a titration curve and from that titration curve we will get the equivalence point so let's start the video so here we will uh, uh, determine the strength of more salt solution by this ex uh, instrumental analysis. So here this machine is the potentiometer by means of this machine we can uh, calculate or we can see the uh, electrode potential of the system. So here you can see these are the two electrode one is the reference electrode so that is the yellow is the reference electrode and this is the platinized platinum electrode. So we have to prepare the solution and must dip this reference electrode into a, uh, I mean the platinized platinum electrode into the solution. So which solution we have to prepare and this is the salt bridge you know that is from your class 12 electrochemistry knowledge you know all these things. So without focusing on that I am focusing on the practical part what you have to do. So that is the more salt you have to collect the more salt approximately or allocate 20 uh, ml of this more salt in this uh, conical I mean in this beaker. So first I am taking the more salt approximately 20 cc by means of the pipette. In this experiment we will uh, determine two things one is the reduction potential of Fe3 plus Fe2 plus system and the second one is to find out the concentration of this more salt solution. <coughs> Next. Now after taking 20 cc of more salt you have to add sulfuric acid. Now in the more salt solution of 20 ml more salt solution you have to add approximately 20 cc of sulfuric acid. So by this uh, uh, measuring cylinder you just take 20 cc of sulfuric acid here. So sulfuric acid will be given or provided to you that is a very dilute solution. So that is 20 ml of sulfuric acid. Now shake the solution and add sufficient amount of water to dip the platinized platinum electrode into it. So I am taking approx 10 cc of distilled water that is sufficient for dipping the electrode. No need to take exactly 10 cc, you can take 12 cc or 11 cc also. So that is our solution. So that our solution is ready. Now I am taking our the solution into the another beaker. So uh, note that two beakers are connected by means of a salt bridge and you know what are the function of salt bridge from the theory portion of your class 12 knowledge that is from electrochemistry chapter. Now look our system is ready and that is the that is the chemical equation. <coughs> the basic equation is e, no, e is equals to E0 plus 2.303 RT by NF log concentration of metal. And the basic uh, reaction that will take place once we start the experiment, as you can see the burette is filled up by potassium dichromate solution. And when potassium dichromate is reacted with Fe2+, Fe2+, means more salt contain Fe2+, and potassium dichromate has chromium, and the oxidation state of chromium is plus 6. So once Fe2+, reacts with Cr6, that will give rise to the formation of Fe3+, that means Fe2+, converted to Fe3+, that means removal of electron takes place. And here also this 3 electron adds up to the chromium 3, 6 plus and thereby forming chromium 3 plus. So that is the redox reaction. That is the oxidation and the chromium 6 to chromium 3 plus is the reduction reaction. Now let us start the experiment. So here 
in the fast data should be recorded so look the temperature table has been created and i have noted the initial room temperature is 22 degrees celsius from the thermometer once you do the experiment you must note it down okay now in the next page i have draw the table so here the number of observation and number of drops of uh, potassium dichromate should be added here so first the number of drops of in k2cr207 is zero because no drops of uh, dichromate is added still in the beaker so i have to write zero here and the e cell what is uh, showing here it is 0 0.309 so we have to write 0 0.309 here that is 0 0.309 that is the reduction potential in volts okay now first just add a maximum of 10 drops into the system and you can see the change once i add the k2cr207 in the mode salt the reaction will take place that you have recently see the reaction from the previous page so i am adding 10 drops One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have added ten drops. Just gently shake this beaker. Gently shake this beaker. So as you can see, the color change is happening here. Actually, the, the bluish green color is due to the formation of chromium sulfate, that is Cr two SO four halides. I am not focusing on the chemistry the basic part rather focusing on the instrumental part or the procedure part so now the value is after adding 10 drops of dichromate it is 0 0.374 now just add 5 drops okay now i am adding 5 drops of dichromate 1 2 3 4 5 gently shake the beaker you can see the color change and the that is a very easy practical just you have to add the number of blocks and observe the reduction potential 0.387 then again add 5 drops look the change is not very uh, high the first is 309 and the next one after adding 10 drops we get uh, 0.374 and the next one is 0.387 <coughs> Next step, five drops. Okay, so now we have taken these data uh, as that will kill time, so that's why we have fast forwarded the video. <coughs> but if you have any confusion, you simply ask us. Now, uh, last time I am adding the five drops because it's just going near to the equivalence point. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's showing 0 0.42 approximately. That is 0 0.423. Look, the difference is not uh, uh, very low. The difference is high. So as the difference is high, so we have to add small, small drops. So that's why we are shifting from 5 to 2 drops, right? Right now, we will not add 5 drops. Rather, we are shifting from 5 drops to 2 drops. So add two drops each time and then again once you see the number of drops addition is i mean the difference of two successive recording is too much with respect to two drops then you have to add one drop for getting concordant values and that will help help to draw the graph properly or to get a good graph one two Now it's showing 4.428. That is 37 drops. Eighth observation, 37 drops. 0.428. So now look, we have already added uh, 49 drops, and uh, we are successively adding two two drops each time. <coughs> we have started the addition of two drops after 35. Before 35, we have added five five drops each time. And at first we have added 10 drops. Whatever. Now at 49 drops, the data is showing 0.455. So as you can see, the difference between 0.448 and 0.445 is greater than that of the previous two. That means 0.444 to 0.448. So as the difference between uh, 47 drops and 49 drops is greater, 
so that's why uh, we are not adding two drops after 49 now from 50 drops we are adding one on each time why because the uh, as the difference between two successive data is uh, high so that's why we have to suppress the drops we have to add slow slow drop or small small drop so now i am adding only one drop so let's see what is the variation what is the change one that is the 50 drop now look the change for the addition of one drop it changes to 0.458 then again add one drop one drop it's 0.461 then again one drop total number of drop is 52 here Right, point four six So now we have added up to for 54 that is starting from 47, 49 to 54 we have added one one drop. Uh, right now we are also adding one drop so look at to the change that is very important. One drop and now look at to the change. There is a sharp change I think so. It will give us sharp change. <coughs> 0 0.477. Just fluctuating between 7, 8 or 7, 7, you can write any of the value. Seven drop. Point four nine zero. That is 0.5. Uh, the last observation is actually 58 drops and we have shifted in another page. So on 58 drops the EMF as you can see from the screen also it is 0.5. Now we are adding the 59th drop, the 24th observation. Now look the change is almost 0 0.015 or 0 0.016 sorry 0 0.516 now 
now there is a sharp change also look there is a very very sharp change that is from 0.516 to 0.56 almost there is almost 0.56 <coughs> next so that should be the equivalent point range There is also a big change. So gently shake the beaker and mix the solution thoroughly, and that can react easily. It is point double six o double six two. So I am taking the points. That is another point point six six two where the change is so sharp. Now the change will gradually decrease. Now I am uh, last one drop has already been added. Now I will add two two drops each time because look the difference between these two observation is not too much, but the difference between these three observations is high. So the equivalence point will range in this uh, region. So once I plot the graph, in the next part I will add another portion where the graphical representation and the calculation will be easily uh, will be given here. So you just go through this. Okay. <coughs> For the addition of two drops, that's sixty-four point seven o three almost. Again, I am adding two drops, and after that, I will add five five drops. So, so I have added two drops uh, after sixty-one. Uh, so, sorry, after sixty-two. The difference is not a big one, and then 66 again two drops that will showing as you can see 0.720 or 21 anything you are right that is 720. Now I will add five five drops and we'll take the observation two or three times last. 30 31 so that will be 60 71. Now I add five drops. Now I have added uh, five drops after sixty-four. Five drops that is seventy-seven. Uh, Sorry, after sixty-six that is seventy-seven. It's showing point seven four zero. Now again, last I will add uh, five drops, and at last I will take last observation after adding ten drops. Again, I add five drops. One, two, three, four. And the last one, five. Uh, you can see the color change also. The color is not mm, right now. It is not is uh, exactly bluish green. It's showing some uh, grayish. It's some showing some yellowish. Come here, six plus here. So that is due to the uh, change of CR uh, six plus to CR three plus because no more Fe two plus is present into the system because all the Fe two plus gets converted to Fe three plus. Now no more Fe three plus. Sorry, Fe two plus is there. All the color is showing due to the A uh, change of CR six plus to CR three uh, plus actually. So uh, the for seventy six drop uh, the value is point seven five six and last time that is a thirty two observation. I'm adding ten drops. That will be the last observation. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten. Yeah. That's the last observation and it's showing. Point seven seven almost seven seven two. So according to these, based on these uh, data, uh, based on these data, I will draw a graph, and from this graph you can see how the data are coming or how the uh, calculations are coming. I will do the next thing in the next part. Thank you.